Hello everyone. Today I will be talking about parameterized verification of disjunctive time networks. This is joint work with Etienne, Paul, and Sven. Consider a timed automaton in which a process wants to reach the location goal. The process has a local clock variable x initiated to zero, and uh, its behavior is captured by the local run, which is depicted in the bottom of the slide. Uh, the process in order to take the transition to Q1 has to satisfy this clock constraint x greater than or equal to five. So it has to delay at least five units and let's say it does, and then it reaches Q1. However, before going to goal, it is already violating what is called an invariant on goal, which limits the value of x to at most three. So the process cannot reach the goal in this case. Let us consider an extension of this model called guarded time automaton, where uh, the transitions can have what are called location guards. The meaning of location guard is that if a process is at Q3 and wants to take the transition to goal, it has to have another process in Q2 waiting for it so that this can take the transition. Naturally, a model with the location guards can only be meaningful if there are more than one process in the network. And such a network with a GTA and a network of process is called disjunctive time network. The word disjunctive comes from the uh, location guards are uh, disjunctive in nature. That means if they check if there is any one process in, uh, in a location guard, there could be more than one also. Um, and the size of a network is uh, the number of processes in the network. In, the, in this case, it is two. The behavior of a network of processes is captured by global runs. And uh, let us see in this network if it is possible for one process to reach goal, given that there are more than one now. Uh, since the minimum location guard, um, location, uh, clock constraint uh, constant is at least two on all the transitions. Both of the trans both of the process have to delay at least two units to make some progress. And now the one of the process can go to Q3 because it satisfies the clock constraint. And it cannot yet go to goal because it, it needs to satisfy the clock uh, location guard for which another process has to reach Q2. So both of them delay three one more unit of time, and then the process in Q0 can reach Q2, and the process in Q3 can go to goal. So, so far, what we have seen is uh, given a, a, an example GTA, when the network size is one, the location goal was not reachable, and also delta one min, which is the minimum global time to reach goal in a one network size is um, infinity in the sense that it is not reachable. Whereas for two, it is reachable, but it takes at least three units of time. Uh, so we can generalize this term with delta i min. And um, also we can infer that in such networks, for a given process, as the number of processes in the network increases, the behavior possible behaviors only increase. And interestingly, we can ask this question um, and uh, try um, try to see if it is possible to solve uh, in a general case, if the goal is reachable in any network, uh, network of any size. That means how large can we go, uh, should we go to reach a, uh, how large sized network should we go so that a goal is reachable? And uh, similarly, we can ask what is the minimum time to reach a location uh, which is minimum across all possible sizes. One possible way to solve such problem is finding what is called a cutoff network uh, by which I mean, let's say the goal is not reachable anywhere but at a size C. Um, if it is not reachable in C, 
then it is not reachable any any further also and such a c is has a special name in the literature called cutoff network and um, so far the results in this literature are all uh, finding cutoffs and uh, here we are the first uh, in uh, taking a different route in solving this problem that's why uh, it is a interesting way to look um, uh, divert, uh, diverge from the existing result. Um, let me explain what I mean by that. Um, before I explain, let me put out uh, the setting here. Actually, the problem of finding uh, general reachability, parametric reachability, becomes hard uh, in one of the cases where the location guards have invariants. What I mean by that is, for example, in this example, Q2 is a location guard. It is appearing here. It also has a location invariant. Having such a combination, um, having the location, gu uh, location guard having an invariant makes the problem very hard to solve. In fact, there is no existing result. We do solve it in a very restricted sense, uh, but I am not going to touch upon it in during this talk. On the other hand, when such a uh, combination is not allowed there is existing result in which uh, for which they give a cutoff size network of one plus the number of location guards uh, to this end what we give is a single ta we only give one ta uh, time automaton which is not only reachability equivalent but also language equivalent and obviously, this means that we have reduced the network size, um, uh, I mean, from a network to a single time automata, and this results in an exponential gain in the time. Um, yeah, this is why our result was um, performing much better when compared to the existing result. In this, in this talk, I will primarily talk about given a GTA, how to construct the TA that I was talking in the earlier slide. And uh, this involves using the quantity delta min for the all the location guards. Um, and uh, I will try to look into why they are language equivalent. The resulting the TA, the resulting TA, and uh, one of the uh, process in the network. Why are the language equivalent? Um, and how to calculate the delta min of this. Uh, uh, this location guards because that's what I'm using here and I'm briefly going to touch about touch on the experiments and some extensions so quickly the key idea is that given a GTA the, for those transitions where there is no location guard it is not interesting we can just copy those transitions onto the TA but for those where there is a location guard we replace it with a clock guard on a new clock which is a global time clock uh, such that the clock constraint is t is greater than or equal to delta min of q, where q is the location guard. Now, why does this work? Okay, I, I constructed the TA, but why does this work? Why does this have the same set of runs as one of the processes in the arbitrary network? That's what I mean by language equal. By language, I mean the set of runs which we looked so far, the local runs of one process and that runs of the time automata. These are exactly the same. That's what we're going to show. Okay, before we show what one implication is worth noting, once we see the language equivalence, we not only can verify reachability, but also arbitrary properties like um, the liveness also. I will try to look in one direction. Let's say we have um, taken a run from time automaton A prime. Now we have to show in A. E, this exact same run uh, is, is possible by a given process. Now uh, observe that, uh, let's take a run which is reaching goal. So yeah, this is the transition and it has many transitions uh, before the final one, which which includes the clock guard that we have introduced. So all the previous transitions can be trans uh, can be easily copied by a process on the left hand side because they're just normal time automated transitions. So there is nothing stopping from a process to take exactly those transitions if they are taken here. But what about the 
final transition um yeah so this is the final transition where let's say it is uh, the clock guard we have introduced is uh, t greater than or equal to delta min of q2 now the thing is there are two cases there are two possible runs this run this exactly t is equal to delta min of q2 um for this the corresponding behavior here is possible because as we will show later uh the way we construct delta min of a location guard is such that there exists always a network such that it reaches a location guard at a location guard whatever q let's say at delta min of q now given this if this is true then what this means is that there is a witness for example given by the uh, light shaded uh, uh, cartoon it is the witness that reaches the q2 and stays there then this guy can take this transition which is having the location guard q2 and that's a legitimate transition that's what i mean by witness helping the one of the process to take the transition now on the other hand for those runs here which satisfy t greater than min of q2 thanks to our assumption that the location guards are not having invariants this process can stay here even after it uh, it process delta min of q2 so that this transition is still possible from q3 to goal so the witness can come here at delta min of q2 and stay there forever that is the um, that is possible only because we assume this we assume that there is no invariant on q2 now on the other direction also we can similarly prove what you um i would uh, recommend you to look into the details of the paper so once we have shown the language equivalence um uh, language equivalence of one of the processes here with the time automaton um now what we needs to be shown is that delta min of this uh, of a location guard how do we calculate it and how does this uh, also give a witness this is what we have to show uh, i'll try to briefly look into that so to make it more general i consider the gta which has two location guards and what we're going to do is first we're going to remove all the transitions with the location guards and we result in a time automaton and explore the zone graph of that until we reach one of the location guards uh if nothing is reachable we stop otherwise we reach something then we have witnessed a run to such a location guard and we call uh, the time taken to that as delta min of q3 so we do have a witness run that's what we wanted earlier whenever we reach a location guard at delta min of q3 when we claim something is delta min of q3 we need to show a witness that take that much time that's what we wanted um now once we have this we can replace uh, delta min of q3 um, t being at least delta min of q3 at the location guard q3 and then cal calculate for q2 now we get a witness run for q2 also like that we get delta min of q3 q delta min of q2 for every location guard we can get this quantity once we have it we can plug in and we can do uh, we can go ahead with the proof that we showed before so we have shown how to calculate delta min iteratively now we actually implemented this using the the zone implementation and compared it with the cutoff system implemented in upal uh, we did it for a case study which uh, models a clock synchronization protocol and we verified various safety and liveness properties and because of the uh, succinctness of our solution there was an exponential gain in the time taken and uh, also you can look into our arcade version for more other examples where there was actually a lot of gain in the time uh, also um yeah and uh, there is also uh, we developed a theory for cases where there is indeed location guards with location invariants but we needed some conditions on that uh, like for example that location guard should be a part of a loop and uh, it should also have uh, 
um, a resetting clock and more more such conditions are there in which case our result of language equivalence still holds true in conclusion we have looked into the parameter rich multi problem and then we have given a novel idea of looking uh, not just looking at cutoffs but a very different idea of constructing a timed automaton which has the exact same language and since we are constructing one timed automaton we are able to get a uh, lot of uh, gain in the time taken and also we briefly touched upon the extensions thank you for your time and i look forward to your questions.